the next question is coming from the domain monitoring and alerting and here we are covering uh, a topic regarding prometheus explain different way in which prometheus can get the metrics so i would like to mention here that you might have not learned about prometheus uh, because not all devops training or boot camps will cover prometheus they might cover nagios they might cover javex and other tools i have made a best example here with prometheus and in future videos you might also see other questions related to other tools but don't worry if you are not aware of this tool and if you have not used this tool in the interview you can simply say that i have not used this particular tool and i have used xyz other tools and uh, hence i might not be able to answer it but as of now let's continue with this question and see if this were to be asked then what are they expecting from us here we are aware that prometheus is our monitoring tool right and they are expecting us to see if we understand the architecture of prometheus if we know how prometheus works you can pause the video here to see how you would answer it in the interview so here i would like to first explain the way in which prometheus works prometheus as we know is a monitoring tool and it collects metrics and it stores it once the metrics are stored we can do many things we can do dashboarding on top of it we can also do alerting on top of it but how does actually the metrics come to prometheus the first way is pull based approach and the second way is push based approach in the pull based approach your application it can be a java application or it can be any application javascript node js doesn't matter it will expose a metrics endpoint and prometheus will script from the metrics endpoint this is called as pull based approach in a push based approach your application will send the metrics via a gateway node and it will be stored in prometheus you can observe the arrow mark here that i have made it is clearly explaining the same thing what is the use case of pushed based approach there might be some application that might not be running 24 into 7 they might just come up and go away in such cases push base will help so what is the answer here then the answer here is prometheus collects metrics in two ways the first way is pull based approach and the second way is pushed based approach both of the approaches are valid and based on the application design we will use either pull based approach or pushed based approach this is how you can answer this question in the interview of course like i said if you are not aware of this tool just tell them that i have not used it and i have used some other tool and you can discuss about that tool in the interview. Your development team needs your help to monitor the API endpoint. Which HTTP response would you monitor? And when will you trigger the alert? This question, as you observe, is not related to any one technology at all because you might be doing alerting and monitoring in different tools that is implemented in the organization or that you probably have learned in the training but this question focuses upon your real-time experience and if you have worked in such scenarios this is a most common thing that you might encounter in a company because api endpoints are very common the whole gist of this question lies in the HTTP response. That is the hint that you should get. Well, you can pause the video here and see how you would answer this question in the interview. Let me now go ahead and explain a bit more about this HTTP response and then how to answer this question in the interview. First and foremost, it is important for us to understand that we are trying to debug an issue related to HTTP endpoint. That is, we have an API 
And when we do a GET request to this API, we will get some response. And you can consider this as HTTP response. What is an API endpoint? Example, you might have slash status endpoint, slash home endpoint, and these are called as endpoints. And these endpoints, they do certain kind of tasks and uh, the task can be anything. It, they can display some information or they can just display some code. Irrespective of what they do, one thing that is common is when you do a get call to this particular API, it will always send you a response code that is a http response code to understand this in a better way you can understand that let us say if you call someone via your mobile phone what will happen you're going to get some status code right either they will pick the call or either they will um, cut your call or they might send you an automated response or they might be out of the network range in which case you might get an automated message. Similar way, every API endpoint gives back what we call as HTTP response code. To explain this in a bit more detail, I have shared some important API response codes here. Successful response is in the range 200 to 299. Redirection, that is one API to other API redirection is 300 to 399, client error is 400 to 499, server error is 500 to 599. Now this as response code is important for us because what we will do is we will write a small script or set up any monitoring service that will check this response code that is written when we do a call to this API endpoint. So the question is focusing about checking the health status. So if we get any response in this range, then we can say that we have an issue with our API endpoint, and then we can trigger an alert. I hope you understood the gist of all of this. So how do we answer this question in the interview? To tackle this problem, I would first begin with writing a script using either Python or Linux. And I would do a git call to the HTTP, uh, to the API endpoint and get a HTTP response. What I would be interested in is what kind of response am I getting? If this response is in the range of 400 or 500, then I will trigger an alert because the standard HTTP response 400, 500 range means we do have either client error or server error. This is how you can answer it. Now, you don't need to go in depth of how will you write the code, how will you set it up, et cetera, as part of this question. They might ask you a counter question or let's say an in-depth question on how would you write this code? Well, we have already discussed this problem statement in the previous video, so I believe you can relate to that question and how to answer that in case you were asked to write such kind of code. I hope that was clear that what are some ways in which you have set up alerting this is a very practical question they are asking in the interview and it is directly checking if you have really worked on any devops setup or not so what do we mean by setting up alerting Definitely as a DevOps engineer, you will have to follow some best practices on how to adapt alerting in your organization. There are different ways of alerting like we know, and we need to make sure that we follow one of it. And that is what we're going to say in the interview. Well, you can pause the video here to see how you would have answered this question in the interview. And now I'm going to explain this part of the question in this slide. So, it is a very common process being a DevOps engineer, you will be de defining the alerting mechanism in your organization. I believe I've already mentioned this in the previous videos, but I would like to repeat it here that no organization will have multiple different alerting streams. No, because it is very hard to maintain it. And in case of incident, 
many people will have different authority mechanism and it will become a nightmare to coordinate all of this. Hence, you should be aware that in every organization, there is one flow and you have to say that this is the flow in the organization that I have used. Alerting notifications are usually done via email, mobile phones or Slack messages. And this whole alerting mechanism also is known as on-call system, meaning you will be the person responsible for your production system 24 into 7 during this time. There are multiple ways of doing this, and I would like to mention a few ways. The open source ways are basically Prometheus and via Alert Manager, meaning Prometheus will uh, trigger the alert via Alert Manager, and it will do the notification via any of the setups that you have done. There is also CloudWatch SNS way in which you can do the same, and Nagios and alerting mechanism also can be implemented. Now, as a part of the DevOps preparation, uh, you might have learned either Prometheus or Nagios or CloudWatch. So I've given all the three examples for you. You pick any of the three to answer this particular interview question. I will be picking Prometheus and Alert Manager because I believe it is one of the most famous open source ways and many of you would be aware of this. Okay, so how do we answer this question in the interview? As a part of setting up alerting in, on, in my organization that we follow, we are currently using Prometheus and Alert Manager, using which if there is any issues with our systems, if we get an email notification and a phone call so that we address this issue right away. Also, I'm aware that there are other alerting mechanisms that I can also use based on the cloud that we are using. And in AWS, we are, I am aware that we have CloudWatch and SNS to do the same. An other example for open source is Nagios alerting mechanism, which can also be implemented. This is how you can answer this question in the interview. Please explain how you create your dashboard for monitoring service in your current project? This is a very simple question. And I would say this is an opening question. So they are just asking you to understand what tools you use. So we don't have to complicate our answer, but we should know what is our dashboarding or monitoring service that we're using. Often, many of my students, they confuse this question into monitoring service they use but we have to understand that the question is focusing on the dashboard you might be doing monitoring with any kind of tools but the question is focusing on how are you presenting this metrics into your users or to your users or developers etc so this dashboarding tool is also important in monitoring and that is what they are focusing on so what is the answer to this question before I share that, let me explain a few tools that we can use for dashboarding. Dashboarding, uh, as I just explained, is a way in which you are going to present the metrics. Present the metrics. If you are heavily dependent on Kubernetes, that is, you are explained all your project in Kubernetes, then obviously our choice of dashboarding would be Grafana. But if you are explaining an AWS project, that is a three-tier web project that is using EC2 autoscaling group database, etc., then our dashboarding tool will be CloudWatch. Apart from this, if you want to choose a tool that can uh, that is out of these two, you can choose the ELK stack, where K stands for Kibana, which can act as a dashboarding tool this project can be implemented anywhere it can be done on kubernetes or aws etc but also on premises if you want so i'm giving you example for all different kinds of project you might say in the interview this is all they're asking you based on how you present this answer they are going to follow up with further questions related to how you would be using a cloud watch how you will be using graphon etc but let us not over deliver in this question let us focus on the given question and how to answer it. 
Okay, so how would you answer this question in the interview? This is how you can answer it. Quote, as we know, monitoring and dashboarding are two main observability parameters that we have to follow as a DevOps engineer. Dashboarding especially helps us to present the metrics to our developers, testers, and ourselves. Because I'm using Kubernetes as a main project, and that is what we are working on day in and day out, we are using Grafana for dashboarding. Slash, if I were to use an AWS project, let us say I have to work on a project that is just on AWS, I would prefer to use CloudWatch because there is a beautiful integration of CloudWatch for everything that we do in AWS, and it is easy to use. If I don't have both of these options, that is I can't use Kubernetes, neither I can use AWS project. Sometimes it happens on on-premises. In this case, I might set up an ELK stack to make things easier because it's a proven system that can deliver much better results when I don't have the options of Grafana or CloudWatch, unquote. This is how you can present this answer. A small note here, many of you might have not learned about ELK, if that is the case, you can remove the ELK part out of this answer. My recommendation is always that you should know Grafana and CloudWatch because these are some leading market dashboarding tools that one must be aware when you become a DevOps engineer. That is it for this video. I hope you learned something interesting 